Over here, you have a large region which is referred to as the hair bulb. At the base of the hair bulb, we can see there is connective tissue extending into the center of the hair bulb. This would be the, the hair papilla. It contains the blood vessels which are going to supply nourishment and oxygen and remove wastes to keep the hair matrix, which is right above it, and surrounding the papilla healthy and dividing so that new hair can be produced from this location. Right above the matrix, you can see this white line. This white line would represent the medulla of the hair. The darker material which surrounds this white area would represent the cortex of the hair. And then there is a very subtle white line right over here on the surface, which would correspond to the cuticle of the hair. On the outside of the cuticle, you would have the internal root sheath. You can see that it is the thin pink that is between the white line and the more cellular looking structure on the outside, which is the external root sheath. If you follow it up towards where you have the oil glands, you can see right over here, the internal root sheath disappears, it disintegrates into create a space which would allow the oil from the sebaceous glands to go to the surface. Outside the internal root sheath, you have the external root sheath, and you can see there's an attempt in this model to show individual cells that you find in the external root sheath. And if we follow the external root sheath up, you can see that the external root sheath becomes the epidermis. The external root sheath represents a continuation of the epidermal cells. This thickened basal lamina is referred to as the glassy membrane. And if we follow the glassy membrane up, we will see that it is continuous with the basal lamina of the epidermis. So it represents a continuation of this basal laminar over here, and it thickens as it goes down and lines the outside of the follicle. On the very outside of the follicle, you have this fibrous capsule, which enables smooth muscle to attach to the follicle. You can see here in the skin of the scalp and the skin of the armpit, associated with the hair follicles, we have smooth muscles, which are called the erector pili muscles. We take a closer look. The muscle attaches to the fibrous capsule of the follicle and extends up to the papillary layer of the dermis. When this muscle contracts, it will stand up the hair and help to express the oil gland, which you see over here nestled in between the hair follicle and this muscle.